In this beginner tutorial, you will learn most of the tools needed to create just about any kind of animation inside of Framer. We will recreate this layout while covering features like scroll speed, scroll animations, scroll transforms, and scroll variants. The first thing we need to do is to set up our layout. And by the way, if you wanna use the finished working file as a reference, you can grab it in the link down below. So we start by creating a frame. We give it a height of 100 VH, a width of fill, and a max width of 1200 pixels. We hit plus on layout to make it into a stack. Then inside of the stack, we create a text field and write scroll animation. We bump it up in size, make it semi-bold, squeeze it together a bit, make sure that it goes on two lines, maybe even decrease the line height a bit. Then we'll add another frame, give it 500 pixels in height and width, give it a bunch of radius, make it into an image, pick a very cool and vivid image, we set it to position absolute, center it. We drag it on top of the text field, change the blending to lighten, bump it down a bit. And now it's time for the scroll container. So I'll create a, another frame. I'll make it into a stack. Once again, I'll set the width to fill. I'll add a max width of 1200 pixels. I'll give it a random height for now. I'll select the desktop and make sure the height is set to fit so that it covers all the elements that we have. I'll rename this column to scroll container. And inside of this container, I'll create another container. And this one is going to contain the text. So I'll call it text container and I'll set the width and the height to fill. I'll make sure that it's a stack by hitting plus on layout. Then I'll add a text field saying get inspired, bump it down a bit in size. I'll highlight the last part of the text, including the dot, and I'll change it to a cool color. I'm gonna highlight the text container and duplicate it twice. Then I'll go to scroll container and change the direction to vertical. Then I'll once again target our text containers, make sure that they're aligned to the left. I'll grab all of the text containers, add them into a stack, make sure that the stack is set to fill, fill. I'll go to each text field and change the copy. I'll once again target the colored parts and switch the colors a bit. And there we have it, a group of meaningless boxes and text fields for now. Let's make it a bit cooler. I've uploaded a couple of cool icons. I'm gonna grab them all, right click, add stack, change width and height to fit content, set the gap to zero. Now I'll create another frame, make sure that it covers the full size of the image, make sure that we place it separately. Then inside of this frame, I'm gonna drag in our newly created stack with the images. I'm gonna give the frame some radius, I'm gonna give it a shadow that is realistic. I'm gonna give it a bit of more focus. I'm gonna rename it to icons. Then I'm gonna right click it and create a component. I'm gonna create two variants. For each variant, we'll change the position of the stack of images. So the second one has the second icon and the third one has the last icon. I'm gonna go back to our page I'm gonna copy the component, put it into scroll container, change the direction to horizontal, align it to the top. Then I'm gonna target the component, go to position and set it to sticky. I'm gonna increase the distance from the top to 160. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. I'll target all of our stacks, go to fill and make sure that it's set to a lighter gray like this. I'm also gonna make sure that Every stack has overflow set to visible, which is very important to make sticky work. And that's it for the layout. Time for animations. The first thing we want to do is to add a scroll speed animation. And this is the easiest animation as it just changes the scroll speed of objects that you apply it to. So if we select this image, click plus on effects, and hit scroll speed, then bump it up to 150 and play it. 
you can see that we get this parallax effect. And this is because the image moves at 150% in speed, while the other elements on the page move at 100%. The second thing we want to add is the scroll animations. And scroll animations in Framer perform one single animation action on scroll. In this example, I'm gonna use it to add a fade in animation to our text fields once we reach the section that contains them. To make this work, we first have to make sure that all of our text containers have a scroll section set. So I'll call this section one, I'll call the second one, could you guess it? Section two, the third one, section three. Once this is done, we can select the text field, go to effects, add a scroll animation, and set the trigger to section in view. On section, we can target each individual section. For this one, we'll target section one. And by choosing center here in the viewport, we make sure that the animation starts as soon as the section hits the middle of our viewport. Then we pick that it's gonna replay in both scroll directions. And for the animation itself, we can go into enter and change the properties as we want, what it's gonna look like when we enter or when we exit. However, I'm gonna make it easy for myself and use a preset. So I'll just choose fade in. I'll go to the effect, hit copy, then target our other text fields, right click and hit paste effects. Now, before we play it, we need to make sure that we change the sections that they trigger on. So the second text field should trigger on section two and the third one should trigger on section three. Now, if we hit play, we can see that as we scroll past and as soon as the section hits the middle of the viewport, it fades in. And this works in both ways. So if we scroll back, it fades out. If we scroll in, it fades in. The third animation type we want to add is called a scroll transform. While scroll animations perform one single animation action, scroll transform transforms objects as we scroll. In this case, I'm gonna use it to make our text grow as we scroll. So I select the text field, I go to effects, add a scroll transform, I go with on scroll, then I go to the from state and I set it to be one in opacity, one in scale, I go back and into the two state and set it to two in scale. I go back, I then make sure that I add a transition, but I'm not gonna go over the settings here because that's just a whole different rabbit hole. Now, if we play it, you can see that we have our parallax effect with the image as well as the text growth as we scroll. Now it's time for the last animation, scroll variants. Scroll variants allow us to swap between variants within components while scrolling. In this example, we're going to take our three variant component and make it swap itself as we reach different text sections. So let's select our little component. Then we go to effects and hit scroll variant. I'm gonna use the trigger section in view and once again, set it to the center so that it times nicely with our text animation. We'll keep the replay to yes. And we're gonna skip this part here with the variance and go straight to sections here. So I'll set the section one to variant one. Then I'll add another section and I'll set this from section two to variant two. Then I'll add another one and set section three to variant three. And now if we play it, you can see that as we reach the first text field here or the first section, we have the first image. When we scroll down to the second section, we have the second image. And as we come to the third one, we get the third image. And this works in both ways. Now, if you want to learn how to combine component animations with carousels, check out this video where I recreate a Netflix style carousel. Until the next one, have a great life.